Hello and welcome pile number three. This is that pick a card reading. I've decided to upload all three videos as their own separate, but do feel free to check out the other readings. This pick a card here was something that came through yesterday and we've been kind of sitting on the messages because the upload didn't go through yesterday. I got cut off in mid, um, in mid recording. So what we had was the intention I was told, yeah, let's pull out this Akashic Tarot. It's got the angels and ascended masters in it. Let's see who wants to talk. And literally right away, Archangel Michael came out and then he came out with two additional cards. You'll see that in the first reading. The second pile came out initiation in the Count of St. Germain. Uh, and he came out solo from that deck and we got other cards on that in pile two. In pile three, we have the Divine Physician, number six. And I should have just shown you those other two in case you found this video first. And maybe some of these will resonate. As I've said in the other videos, you may only resonate with one of these readings. You may resonate with two or all three. They can all be in regards to a large pattern, to multiple areas of life, your career, your family, your home, your love, whatever it might be, your spiritual journey. So those three came out. This is the reading for pile number three. And underneath the deck, the card that came up was balance. Talking about karmic balance, putting something into right order, and the need to seek a balancing viewpoint here to correct something that may have gotten a little bit out of hand or gotten away from you, so to speak. So let's see here. We've got, again, Divine Physician, whether or not you see this as a religious depiction, that's totally up to you. I'm not going to talk a lot about that particularly. I am going to just talk about this as like, the ability to spread connection, unity. I see the the Christed consciousness as unity consciousness of seeing others as our kin, our brothers. And so this message here is like having the healing light within your hands. I don't know if you're a hands-on healer or someone who works with energy at a distance, but his hands are filled with the healing light and his mouth issues forth the word of light. And that's um, that's where we're going with this one. So the first card that came out with that is number four, another major arcana here, birth. And I don't know how to um, say the other version of the birth card, but it refers to a rune that's written on one of the trees here that talks about birth but you can't quite see it. White birch trees might be one that are something significant for you. Maybe a place that you know that has those, or maybe that's one of your totem trees or something like that. You may be more so pagan or even Nordic in your heritage, or maybe you feel that you have had some type of past life or Akashic heritage in that type of energy. But we're seeing this mother with the with the wildflowers out gathering with her two children, perhaps, and the dog. So it's very wholesome, very interesting in that regard. So this is something that with the divine physician and birth here, and the, the woman is shown solo with these two children. In the moment, it's bringing up this story of this Virgin Mary type thing. And also then in contrast with that, the Mary Magdalene story, the Lilith story. And these were coming through earlier. I decided to take a, a swim in the rain. It was it was liberating, gorgeous. But it was rumbling and thundering and I didn't want to get electrocuted. So anyways, back to this. So there's um, these stories came through. Because there's, uh, there is information in each one of these stories, whether we take them literally or symbolically, right? And we're talking perhaps about maybe a single mother in this case. And, and it doesn't matter if, if you're a single mother and, and you've had a supportive 
partner or if you were a single mother that had somebody that either um, perhaps passed away or somebody who never took part or somebody who it just didn't work out, right? There's all these levels and you could be a single father. I am not going to say that this is stereotype energy, but the depiction is feminine. So talking about the ability to nurture one's children and here it's kind of telling me about the ability to not be bitter, but to go out and create something good with that time. And you may also be in a situation where you have not had children at all or yet, or maybe you cannot have kids, but there's this connection with children. And this could even be friends and connecting with the inner child of other individuals or children in spirit. Yes. Oh, that one hit me hard. Okay. So for some of you, just as a confirmation, you may have a mother figure in spirit that is overseeing children playing. They don't have to be your children. It could be nieces, nephews. It could be they are looking over you and your inner child. I'm seeing this as um, connection between timelines and veils here. That's really beautiful. So, okay, I'm seeing alchemy under the deck. So the divine physician here, he's got the hermetic alchemical symbol like the medicine symbol it's talking about healing holistic health um, perhaps even medical health and because it says divine physician i want these two um you may know somebody in this situation or yourself has perhaps been trained medically but perhaps you're just interested in medical technology or findings. Maybe you research this stuff. I know also if you haven't seen the previous broadcast, there are also those that work with frequency and healing through biorhythms in that type of energy. Uh, you may be highly attuned to energies here, but yeah, something to do with healing yourself and then being able to offer up those teachings to other individuals so that they might heal themselves and their relationships. So much like the other group here, the St. Germain got this one. Transition for me is different than the change card in that it is a, a shift in the way that we process light codes in our very DNA, so at the base level of who and how we are, shifting and healing the alchemy so that we can healthfully process and integrate the energies both that we've been exposed to and the present tense, and as well to perceive of the future in an open-minded way. So this can actually literally come through as physical healing from energetic basis. And many of you are already well aware of all this. Supports our deep understanding of the ever-changing nature of existence and our lives so that we can learn to let go, surrender to the process, and allow transition to occur with ease and grace. So maybe you're letting go of something. It may have been a morning of somebody who has passed away, having maybe thoughts or dreams of them. But there's something here, some type of activation here, where you are letting go gracefully of, of different timelines, different visions, and embracing new dreams in different ways. So there's also these two popping out. Crown chakra and integration, yes. So the way that you integrate light codes specifically from the divine and whether, you know, with these two activations, perhaps ancestral and past, present, future timelines, concurrent timelines with this healing potential, oversight by a physician and a facilitator, some type of perhaps even ascended master or 
some type of counselor, energetic counselor coming in to assist in the communication between the veils, between yourself and someone who has perhaps passed away at 1010 on the timer. Again, I always see 1010 and helping you to release unresolved issues, tensions, um, spoken, unspoken contract. Yeah. So integrating this through your crown chakra and being able to perceive it and to literally speak with these energies in real time and to understand if you haven't been awakened to this, to understand and to believe that you are divinely connected through time and space. You're quantumly entangled with energies. They can never be fully separated from each other. What was one can never be separated. An energy cannot die. It only transitions from state to state. And so this individual is, is still in astral anomaly in your energy field. Is that the wrong word? Anomaly seems kind of like creepy. But I, I think that you guys are aware in some way of your ability to communicate you got the change and the transition, your ability to communicate through, through ascended masters to channel and to perhaps be a medium in some type of a way here and to create healing even across the veil. Like if that individual passed away with, let's even say like they can't, they didn't quite understand how to haul, heal all of their karma and you appear to be an individual who not only can heal yourself in profound ways, you have the capacity to heal others in profound ways, and even energies that no longer exist in the material plane, you're able to connect through your belief and your interconnectivity here. And it says here, the frequency of the crown chakra, the violet color, flower of life supports our spiritual connection to the universe and to our ability to transmute negative energy into light. So St. Germain is assisting with this as well. Pile number two coming in perhaps, but connection to the universe and our ability to transmute that into light is the light code transition to transition those light codes into greater light, integrating them into our life and, um, Oh, there was something else. Um, yeah, the, the unity consciousness, to be able to transmute that. So let's get you some Art of War information to help you also transition and shift this into this ability that you're encountering to communicate. I just heard something really loud. I think it was a tree falling. I don't know interesting if that was a confirmation for you learn your lessons comes out education begins on the first day of our lives and ends on the last or does it we learn something new every day some of it planned some of it unplanned some of it useful and some of it irrelevant we learn in different ways by seeing by showing and by doing Realizing how you learn is a skill that you can improve by trying the various different methods. So you're really learning and growing and shifting and changing your ability to feel, think, perceive, believe, shifting and changing the way that you communicate and bring light out into the world, becoming aligned with that Christ, a divine healing light lighthouse energy out into the world. Sun Tzu said, while heeding the profit of my counsel, avail yourself also of any helpful circumstances over and above the ordinary rules. And that to me is talking about like, oh, well, I lost my chance to resolve this, this karmic contract. Um, I didn't know that they weren't going to be here forever. Well, that's the ordinary rules. But if we know that energy persists and we trust in, 
and um, are connected with the divine. If we've had synchronous evidence and confirmation upon confirmation here, we can start to integrate and to ask and believe <clears throat> and we can um, gain the counsel from the ascended council, the light workers, the uh, prophets, the gurus, the ascended masters and, and angels and archangels and God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it. The divine is definitely here and asking us to integrate these new light codes here. And it will be life changing. It's bringing you online with some powerful information that either is going to be written, spoken, sung, evidenced into your life. So there's something above and beyond where we don't only learn through the word of others. We learn through our divine ability to download, upload, whatever you want to call it, and to integrate the codes in the way that it uniquely strikes us. And how it uniquely strikes us has meaning and validity. And we can affirm that, that whatever comes through us from the divine is an activation that we are meant to go out and to share some way for the highest good of all. Because there's a gathering here. There are individuals seeking you in return and you're being guided. So, yeah, you're learning something very powerful in that regard. Um, yeah. About the way that you're using your words. Okay, so... Again, with you, the disclaimer, this new deck here that I've got, the Rebel deck, is quite spicy and has a lot of language on it. So if that's not your thing, go ahead and fast forward while I look at this deck. And um, we'll get you a couple little no-nonsense messages from here. And um, the first one is, breathe through that shit. Love can hurt like hell. Can't it? Yeah. And sometimes it's like um, maybe you are feeling in some type of way rejected or abandoned by love or by God or by someone who passed away, um, left alone before their time. You know, maybe it's a partner. Maybe this is a pattern that someone important in your life wasn't there for you. And now when you seek for your own choices you incidentally, accidentally, perhaps on purpose to activate you in a powerful way, attracted another situation that, that was similar and challenged you again to fall back again on that beautiful light that you are to develop that light because you are needed. And perhaps without that activation, you may not have had everything come online the way it was, but that's not to excuse or accept or tolerate. It's just to give you a little spectrum. You think you got them all figured out, do you? You don't. Time to talk money. Tantrums are for babies. Really? Send a pic and work out and grow old as F together. <laughs> so, Okay, uh, for some, yeah, if you've got some tension energy within you guys, sometimes we can really benefit by doing something physical together. Because if you've both got stagnant, aggravated energies that may not even belong to this moment or this situation, things can pile up. So yeah, we can hurt our partners, but perhaps that's in our loved ones, our family, whatever. But working out can really be an effective way, dancing it out, singing it out. Uh, all of these ways can help us to utilize the energies in a healthy, more proactive way. Like if, let's say you've got anger issues, right, that um, come up some type of conditioned outburst behavior or they do or whatever, right? It could be super sensitivity, whatever it might be. If we give ourselves a more healthy outlet, let's say, and maybe we uh, take a few laps around the block walking with some music or just taking in the nature that can offer us more grounding, more soothing, and uh, we get that fresh breath when we come back. And there's something magical that has worked through our energetic 
systems in that way. So that can definitely help you. And if, if it's something you can do with another person, all the better, even if it's friends and kids or whatever it might be. But yeah, there's some kind of um, old lesson, perhaps from your childhood, that um, you might be holding another hostage to expectations. That's only for some of you. 2020 on the timer, maybe the year 2020 was a very critical shift transition point for you. Somebody might have transitioned in that year into spirit. 11, persistent drive with those sharks. They smell their goal and they go for it. See what it is you desire and move towards that goal. It's time to zero in on your purpose. Use your intuition and instincts to guide you for the optimal outcome. So yeah, your hands are being filled with that healing light. You're able to be a conduit to spirit and to bring that the healing light of universal forces down into this realm, and it's so needed. Number 43 is setting up parameters. But with all of that love energy, there's always the, the need to have proper boundaries. So assess your relationships and determine how they're aligned with your goals. Setting boundaries requires an honest evaluation of your present partnerships and relationships. So that can be quite essential to determining so much like we've got this predator here in the midst with this persistent drive like if somebody's not aligned with you and they're coming in and badgering you or picking at you and you're you know meant to be put into this healing light that healthy boundary there can look like learning your lessons and saying yeah, you know, I, I really don't need somebody to poke holes in, in my um, self-image any longer. Or, you know, I don't really t need anybody to tell me my business anymore or to make decisions for me. I never did. You know, I've, I feel like these cards here are talking about that you've always been divine guided and you've always been in, in that Christed energy at some level of innocence, that spark of innocence has been maintained within your energy from the first breath of life. And it might even come heavily through the, the motherly side of your family. Um, and this is coming through you and you're able to learn not only your lessons, but the lessons of your lineage, the lessons through even the good, bad and ugly of the matriarchal, patriarchal, stereotypical um, duality consciousness and through the exploration of of the extremities of duality and multiplicity you're able to embrace all that you are and that is how you become the most powerful healer one that does not shy away from the light and the dark and says I am the unconditionally loving breath of life and love in this world and therefore my light is so valuable that it needs to be valued by me and by those in my world. And I will set up those strong parameters and boundaries when and where and as soon as necessary to protect that valuable light from being influenced, influenced or getting toxified or that's not a right word, but you get the drift. So, all right, pile three, I hope that you enjoyed that and were able to get something that helps you to balance out this transitionary phase for you. And if so, do definitely try to engage in some of those uh, buttons on the screen and let me know what you thought about the pick a card reading. And do check out the other uh, pile one and pile two, as well as the other pick a card reading uploaded the day before this one. And we're going to do the daily Dharma next. So I'm looking forward to seeing what energies pop out there. And so take good care of yourself, protect your energy and yeah, honor that inner temple. So love you very much. Appreciate you very much until next time.